Good morning. My name is Chris Ndikumana. I'm the host of the Kanguka Broadcast. You are about to listen to today's broadcast translated from Kirundi to English. Be blessed. Today's Thursday. I'd like to continue the topic I was discussing with you last Thursday. We started on May 30th with a teaching I've titled, Changing Your Mindset. This is going to be a long series. I don't know how long it will take, but I feel constantly compelled to talk about changing your mindset. I mentioned that most Christians don't change their mindset. We become Christians, we're saved, we accept Jesus, but our mindset doesn't change. As long as you don't change your mindset, your life will remain the same. It might even get worse than before you were saved. What's important is to have revelation and understand what the Holy Spirit wants to communicate to us. The Holy Spirit doesn't save us just to go to heaven. As long as we're on earth, our mindset needs to change, and there are many things the Holy Spirit wants to teach us. If you follow this entire series on changing your mindset, you can't stay the same person. Something in your life has to change. From the beginning, we saw that God tries to teach humans through the ant. The ant is so small, but the Holy Spirit wants to teach us through it. We have read Proverbs chapter 6 verse 6, which says, Go to the ant, you sluggard, consider her ways and be wise. He's speaking to someone, he's speaking to you, and he's speaking to me. I've learned a lot from the ant. The ant has taught me a great deal. If today I can manage my life and my finances, it's thanks to the ant. I learned to manage finances from the ant. The word of God says, go to the ant, consider her ways and be wise. In other words, you can become wise just by observing the ant. Glory to God. Verse 7 says, which, having no captain, overseer, or ruler. What does that mean? It means there's no leader telling the ant, do this, do that. No, she is created that way. In fact, God has given wisdom to the ant for our sake. The wisdom God gave the ant is for us to learn from. But people don't want to learn from the ant. The ant was equipped for us, as a model to follow. Verse 8 says that she provides her supplies in the summer. I've said this before, but I'll say it again because it's important to understand that the ant prepares her food in the summer. She gathers her provisions during the harvest. So the ant has been equipped with wisdom. God gave her the wisdom to understand that even if everything is going well, even if the sun is shining, winter will come, and difficult times will arrive. That's the lesson we need to learn as children of God. You who are listening to me now, you might have stability in your life. You have a good salary, you pay school fees, everything is going well at home, but there will certainly be difficult times. It is naive to think that there will never be problems in your life. Don't think that because you have faith, because you are a Christian, because you pray every day, there won't be any problems. That's not true. Teachings that claim you can pray to avoid problems are false teachings. As long as you are in the flesh, as long as you are in this world, there will always be difficult times. You need to be aware that difficult times will certainly come. If you have the wisdom of the ant, you prepare accordingly. For example, if at the beginning of the year you set aside some money just in case problems arise, and if by the end of the year there are no problems, that's great. You can use that money for yourself, for vacations, or for something else. But at least you have prepared wisely, like the ant. For instance, if you earn $500 a month and you spend all $500, sometimes even before the end of the month you run out of money and have to take on debt to make it through the month. If you do that, it means you don't have the wisdom of the ant. Let me refer you back to Proverbs chapter 6 verse 6, where the word of God says, Go to the ant, you sluggard, consider her ways and be wise. She has no captain, overseer, or ruler, but she prepares for the future. When everything is going well, she prepares accordingly. This is what we, as children of God, often lack. Many children of God say, I have faith, I am positive, I don't expect problems, I spend everything in the name of faith. And when problems come and they are broke, they start blaming the devil. Yes, it's true, the devil attacks the children of God, but the devil often takes advantage of our ignorance. That's why the word of God wants us to change our mindset and have the wisdom of the ant, and to prepare like children of God. If you are a child of God who earns a salary or makes money in business, you should set aside a certain percentage each month. A child of God with the wisdom of the ant anticipates difficult times, and when those times come, it's not a surprise because you have already prepared. If you have changed your mindset according to the word of God, you will avoid unnecessary debts and credits because the Holy Spirit teaches us through the wisdom of the ant to prepare for the future. If you have this wisdom, you should always set something aside. There is a lot to say on this topic, and I will continue to talk about it next Thursday.
It's now time to continue our study of the letter of Paul to the Colossians. Today we continue our study of the second chapter, and I will focus on two verses that are my favorites in the entire letter of Paul to the Colossians. These are Colossians chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. If you are reading along in your Bible, you might want to underline these two verses. Verse 14 and verse 15. These verses have set me free. They are liberating verses that give you peace and freedom in the Lord. Verse 14 says that God has wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Verse 13 mentions that before being saved, we were dead in our trespasses and the uncircumcision of our flesh. If you are still living in sin, the word of God says that you are still dead. If you live in sin, if you live in fornication, in lying, in jealousy, and you do not have a life of repentance and sanctification, the word of God says that you are still dead in your trespasses, but he has made you alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. This means we are forgiven through the blood of Jesus. Today, I want to focus on verse 14, which says that God has wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us. What are the requirements that condemn us? Let me explain this in simpler terms. When you commit sins, when you commit abortion, when you rape a girl, when you lie, when you are in fornication, in lying, in adultery, all these sins are recorded somewhere in a book. In the book of Revelation, John saw that at the final judgment, we will all stand before the judge, who is Almighty God, and there will be books where everything we have done on earth will be written. This means that every sin you commit is written somewhere. It is written in your book. There is a record concerning your sins. But when Jesus was crucified on the cross, the word of God says in verse 14 that God wiped out this record. In other words, he erased all the pages that condemn you. This means you are condemned because the devil accuses you based on your sins. He can say to God, he did this, he killed children, he lied, he stole, he did this and that. But all of this is written on a record. And this record was wiped out on the cross because the word of God says that God destroyed it. He destroyed it, he erased it. How did he erase it? By nailing it to the cross. Verse 15 is even more interesting. After wiping out the record, after destroying the handwriting that condemned us, he disarmed principalities and powers. The devil is described as the prince of this world according to Jesus. Jesus said that the prince of this world is coming and he has nothing in me. The prince of this world is the devil, it is Satan. His demons have power from Satan, but that power has been stripped away. When someone is stripped of their power, it means all their strength is taken away. The principalities and authorities have been disarmed, and he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. This is very interesting and also very encouraging. The devil is described as the prince of this world, as someone with power. John chapter 10 verse 10 says that Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's his mission. Satan's mission is to destroy your life, to steal from you, to kill, and to completely ruin everything. But Jesus came so that you may have life, and have it more abundantly. In 1 John chapter 3 verse 8, the latter part of the verse says, For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. If you are listening to me now and you are still living in masturbation, pornography, lying, murder, no matter what sins you are committing right now, even the things you do in secret when you are alone, the videos you watch on your phone, everything is recorded somewhere in that book. And that book will be opened before you, and you will see everything that is written. But if you accept Jesus, if you repent, it means that all the sins you have committed will be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Jesus was crucified, but if you do nothing, if you do not repent, nothing changes. That is why 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation, old things have passed away, behold, all things have become new. In other words, the handwriting of requirements that was against us is erased when you come to Christ. It means that everything you have done will be nullified. It cannot condemn you. Not a single page can condemn you. If you live in lying, Satan presents your lies to God because it is written somewhere. He accuses you because of everything you have done, but when you come to Christ, it is erased, it is destroyed. The record that condemns you is erased. And in verse 15, not only does he erase the record that condemns you, but he also disarms the principalities and powers. This means that the bonds that bind you in sin are disarmed as long as you come to Christ. It is through the love of Jesus on the cross that we receive a life of victory. God willing, I will speak more about this tomorrow because it is very important that we discuss it. May I am bless you. If you're blessed or transformed by Kanguka teachings, you can send us a WhatsApp audio on plus 2567813773.